everyone. Today our thought for the day is in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and we are focusing on 11 to 17 although if you get the chance I recommend you read in from 1 to 17. Before I read those verses just want to set the scene a little bit. So David is talking to his Nathan the prophet. This is after Saul and Jonathan has died and after David has defeated the Philistines and has brought the ark home into a tent um, and he's now settled in his home in his well a palace they say cedar house which shows that the place is full of luxury and he's in peace there's no war right now this is before Bathsheba and before Absalom please correct me if I've got that wrong overturned the people against him and so David is sat with Nathan in this luxury house and he realizes that this isn't right here he is in luxury and yet the ark of God is in a tent and so he turns to Nathan and says, I think I should build a house, a decent house, a, a temple for God and for the ark. And Nathan thinks, oh, that's a good idea. And so he goes home. But God says to him that night, no, that's not what I want. I have always moved with my people in the tent along with them. And I don't want David to make me a house. And in 1 Chronicles 22 verse 8 to 10, David says that God told him that it was actually because David had been in too much war. He had shed too much blood to build his house, to build God a house. In these verses, he reaffirms David, saying, I have taken you from being a shepherd to now a ruler and now a king. I, God, have made you great. I have supported you through war and now I give you peace. And so now we come to verse 11. To 17 and strangely as I always find it it's halfway through a sentence so bear with me this is God talking to Nathan and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel I will also give you rest from all your enemies the Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you when your days are over and you rest with your ancestors I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build my house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men and flogged, inflicted by human hands. But my love will never be taken away from him as I took it away from Saul, whom, whom I was removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Nathan then reported to David all these words of the entire revelation. In verse 11, God says no to David, but let me build you a house. He turns to David and says, no, thank you for the kindness. Thank you for, for wanting to build me a home, but I don't want that. I want to build you a home. I want to build you a house. And you can, and understandably now we look at it, we can see that God is saying, I'll build you a legacy, a dynasty, a future. It says that he goes on to saying about how he will raise, God will raise up an offspring to succeed David. And it's worth noting that never yet at this point had there been a king succeeded by a son in this time in Israel. So as we know, Solomon did build a house. Solomon being David's son did build a house for God. And God did establish Solomon's throne forever. David's family did rule for four plus centuries. But out of the Jesse line came Jesus, who then ruled forever. And in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 11, he talks about it there. The discipline that he talks about may sound harsh, 
but it is talking about a special love, a fatherly love, a supportive love of correction. But he promises to never take away his love and his support to not only David, but also Solomon and follows through their line all the way through to Jesus. So partly God establishes his promises here through Solomon. He ruled, he had the close relationship and he built God's temple. But partly the prophets also point out that the rest is fulfilled in Jesus. In Isaiah 9 verses 6 to 7, for unto us a child is born, a child, a son is given. He goes on to say, unto the throne of David. And through God and through Jesus' sacrifice, we are established in God's family. We have become God's children. And some uh, scholars, theologians, theorise that we are equally entitled to those promises because we are God's children. So what do we think God is saying in this? Maybe you're feeling like David. You want to offer God what you have. Maybe you are in a position of luxury in comparison to those that you can see around you and you are offering God a lot. Maybe things have been really tough and you can only offer God those two pennies like that, like that old lady. But God is wonderful. He sees your desire to serve him. And he says, thank you. He sees your intention. And sometimes he says, thank you. And he takes that and he uses it. But sometimes he says, no, you hold on to that. But he always says, I'm going to build for you and with you so much more. Do you feel like God is building you a home, a life? Maybe a dynasty, dynasty, sorry, or a legacy. If not, talk to him. Invite him in and offer him what little you have. If so, thank him. Because he is a good God and he has blessed us with so much. <laughs>